So thanks everyone for joining up to this presentation. I know that it's right after lunch, so it's going to be challenging to keep you awake. We will do our best. We have some interesting demos to show you. Um, and by the way, it's uh, also a, a big conference. This one, where you have a three or four tracks, I think, some, something like that. So it's, uh, it's, uh, there are many options. So I'm, I really, I'm, I'm glad that you're here uh, and you're eager to learn about SAP as well. Um, so, yeah. This is our usual disclaimer. Um, this was developed by us, uh, not by SAP. So we, you will see this in all our presentations. Uh, so let's keep it. Uh, as for who we are, uh, myself, it's uh, Juan Pablo Perez Echeosian. I don't expect you to remember all that, so JP is just fine. Um, and with me is Nahuel, uh, Nahuel Sanchez. So we both work at Anapsis um, since the, pretty much the beginning of the company. We are strongly focused on business critical applications uh, with, even, with even a stronger focus on SAP. So we do a lot of research. We used to do a lot of penetration tests as well of SAP applications. Uh, and we focus entirely on SAP and Oracle. Um, so we have reported uh, many vulnerabilities to SAP and Oracle as well. Uh, most of the vulnerabilities in, in HANA were actually uh, reported by Nawel, who is here with me. We are also continuously publishing uh, white papers, blog posts, uh, content uh, around SAP and HANA security. Uh, so I really encourage you to go to our webpage uh, slash research. You will find multiple resources uh, to learn even more about SAP security and also HANA security. Uh, we have been presenting uh, on multiple IT security conferences as well. So uh, again, if you go to our webpage, you will see all the presentations, videos, material. There's plenty of uh, uh, documentation for you to, to take as a reference. So let's speak why we are really here, right? Uh, it's not also because we like beer, right? We like, I guess here in London, uh, most of you are very um, are a fan of beer, as, as we are as well. But that's not the only reason, right? The, the reason is because um, if you take a look at the numbers, at 72% of the world's beer production is actually uh, processed by SAP companies. Right? So if you think about it, like uh, the, the most of the world's beer production is uh, flowing through a company, is being produced by a company that is running their most critical business processes through SAP. So you can imagine the kind of impact that we'll have if there is uh, an attack, like uh, a targeting SAP systems to the beer industry, right? So that would be, I think that we nearly catastrophic for all of us, but still uh, you will learn what to do in order to avoid these kind of things. On the same lines, I guess most of you enjoy cars, right? Like uh, you like nice cars, you, you probably drive cars as well as we do. We don't have this car, by the way, but <laughs> we would like to. Um, on the same line, 96% of the automotive companies in the um, Forbes 2000, like the biggest companies producing cars, 96% of them are running SAP, so are SAP companies. So again, you can imagine the kind of impact for the automotive industry if there is an issue on you know, SAP applications or if there's a threat to SAP applications, right? Um, these are quite, uh, I would say, things that we would like and we enjoy, not, not uh, main necessities, right? Um, yeah, 95, an, another number, 95,000 vehicles per day supported by SAP applications. But let's talk about something even more uh, like a primary necessity, right? Something that we cannot live without. That's the food. 78% of the uh, food uh, that is produced in the world is produced in companies that are running SAP applications and are using SAP applications to actually support their most critical business processes. So um, the, the impact of a, a threat to these applications, you can imagine that it's not only about beers, about cars, it's about food. 
the energy, like I, I, I didn't want to start adding slides, one per industry, right? But if we think about critical infrastructure, um, energy, is, SAP is very strong on the energy companies, oil and gas, so that's also a very big impact. Having said that, let's jump into the agenda um, of what we are seeing today. Uh, we are going to be talking about cybersecurity for SAP, specifically for SAP HANA applications. Um, and we will, <coughs> sorry, we will discuss some attack vectors, the mitigations, and what you need to address in order to avoid this. Um, so, <coughs> yeah, this is pretty much it. As for introduction, we need to do some level setting. How many of you run SAP, are SAP customers, pen test SAP, uh, work with SAP applications? Um, okay, I, that's, that's a better number, yeah. I would expect, <coughs> sorry, most of you to actually work around SAP applications um, and do something around SAP. But I, I saw a lot of hands not being uh, uh, up, so for those of you who are not raising your hand, what is SAP? SAP stands for Systems and Applica Applications and Products in Data Processing. Um, so that's the acronym. It's a German company devoted to basically uh, create business applications. Applications that are supporting the most sensitive and the most critical business processes. And by, by that we mean sales, uh, production, financial planning, invoicing, payroll, treasury, and just to name a few, right? Like, pretty much the most important business processes, and there are plenty of them, and there are plenty of applications produced by SAP, are developed uh, in this company. And, and also, important numbers, this is actually a, a screenshot of uh, SAP's uh, web page in the corporate fact sheet. That's this is, uh, the most current uh, information. 320,000 customers. So it's a, a big customer base. Not only that, but also, 87% of the Forbes 2000 companies are SAP customers. So we are talking about a lot of customers and we are talking about the biggest customers. So uh, now if we switch to think, uh, that's something that uh, we need to do if we do research, if we do pen test, most of the times we need to think as attackers. So if we think as attackers uh, and take this data, that's a huge and very critical attack surface, right? Um, then we have some other numbers that, that's not relevant for this. And not only SAP, but what is SAP HANA? Um, because th this presentation is focused on SAP HANA. So SAP HANA is the latest uh, technology produced by SAP and is basically the most important product for SAP because it's supporting every single new and currently supported product. Um, so. Technically, it's an in-memory database with a web application server. Uh, that sounds simple, but it's actually used to uh, support latest releases, new versions, all the innovation. And that's, uh, uh, I, I think, the biggest driver to move into HANA, because um, many SAP customers are not running HANA today, but for sure they will be in a, in a matter of months, years. It depends on their adoption plan. But innovation is a big driver because SAP is not um, putting new innovation in the like uh, old products, right? Everything that goes through HANA, all the innovation is being supported in, in HANA because it's faster, uh, you have real time, you have big data, um, you have a prediction, you have analytics. A lot of these new uh, features that are provided by SAP are running on top of SAP HANA. So, for example, if you are, let's say, Pepsi, and you know that Coca-Cola is running HANA because they have faster analytics, they, they can predict better, you will want to have that as well. So what is, SAP, what is HANA for SAP? That's basically the future. Uh, everything will be running on HANA uh, in the future. Right now, we see that there is a migration path, there is a, a, an adoption phase, for SAP customers to start uh, implementing HANA, but we still see a lot of uh, customers actually doing it. Anyone running HANA uh, here? Okay, I see a few hands. Um, probably, even if you don't know you're running HANA, 
probably you have some project like testing it or evaluating it. The, the customers are on different phases, um, maybe evaluation, testing, uh, doing some uh, specific projects. Um, not all the customers are running everything in production with HANA, but we see them moving into it. So additionally, this is a slide as the first one. This is a slide that you will see in pretty much every presentation that we host, and that's because we are coming from a very technical background, doing pen tests, research, finding vulnerabilities, finding different attack vectors. But what we need to do as also uh, we are actually analyzing SAP applications, which are not ordinary applications. These are applications that are running the most critical business processes. So uh, for example, an information disclosure issue or a vulnerability that allows someone to extract data could lead to espionage attack because of the information that is stored there. We have vendors' information, customers' information, financial planning, intellectual property. We have seen uh, SAP customers actually storing formulas. Like That's probably the most sensitive and most valuable uh, thing for an organization. Um, so it's possible just because the information is there. So if someone, if an attacker manages to break into the SAP system, potentially that could be possible. But let's move away from espionage and think about denial of service, for example. Just a buffer overflow, something hitting a service that disrupts the, the SAP operation, like a, a SAP going down. That could be a sabotage attack. Um, and companies are heavily dependent on SAP. Like companies, literally, many of our customers are actually doing the exercise of analyzing how much would, be, would cost a bridge for us, a bridge on SAP. Um, some organizations realize that they are really dependent on them. Like that could cost per minute several millions. And, and even going beyond the hours or a day, that could be a catastrophic event for the organization. So that's, that's a, a very interesting um, uh, exercise to do as a company, as an organization, to understand how much do we rely on SAP uh, applications to be up and running, because that's the heart of our organization. And finally, fraud as well, like, Create a new employee, change a bank account number, um, just because of the information that is there, a modification, a new purchase order, things like that could lead to a fraud attack as well. So wrapping up the impact, 320,000 companies, the biggest organizations in the world, presence in, in pretty much every industry, and we have critical processes and information. So you can think about the impact of an attack to an SAP or a HANA system, right? That's, that could be quite big. So not, now let's talk about the, the probability. And in order to get some context about that, this is something that we have been evolving over a year, and the, the, we have seen this uh, growing since the beginning. We started in 2009, and back then, we were talking about SAP vulnerabilities and attacks and, and all that, but it was really difficult because there was no public information about SAP attacks, right? So now uh, we have some, some examples of uh, threats to SAP that are going to the public. For example, in 2012, the Greek Ministry of Finance uh, anonymous claimed this attack, and they claimed that they started this through a, a zero day, SAP zero day, or 2013, the first malware that was actually capturing SAP clients' information, or even 2014, the uh, big company, a big organization that had to take the support portal offline because it was, uh, th there was uh, exploitation of vulnerabilities and it was compromised. Or in 2015, this was definitely a game changer uh, because USIS, which was compromised, it was confirmed that the compromise started through an SAP system. And then that company went uh, out of business because of this hack. So you can imagine that starting through an SAP system all the way to taking that company out of business, that's, that's how critical SAP is for organizations. And then uh, OPM was uh, afterwards compromised. USIS was a pro uh, contractor of the OPM. This could be related or not, we don't know. 2016, this was a huge milestone uh, for us. Uh, the, in May, early May uh, 2016, the DHS, US DHS, issued an alert warning about attacks or exploitation of SAP applications. Um, we actually worked together with the US DHS in order to uh, 
generate awareness and create this alarm because there was evidence of uh, exp unauthorized exploitation of SCP applications through the internet. And we can get into more details about this. And you can actually get the threat report uh, from the web page as well. Um, feel free to, to access it and, and check on the details. It was picked by the press uh, a lot. It got a lot of media attention. And it, it, it was very useful in order to uh, raise awareness, right? Because this was a f more than five-year-old vulnerability. So SAP has released a patch. This vulnerability has, has been fixed, but the patch was not applied in, in companies. So companies are running SAP applications, which are very critical in a very insecure state. This was a, a proof of the, the current state of SAP security in, in many organizations. So talking about the probability, um, vulnerabilities being exploited um, and the DHS warning SAP customers to take care of patches and, and configurations and, and cybersecurity threats. So uh, I think if we, we can combine both probability and impact, uh, that's a, a good reason of why you are here today, right? So let's jump straight into HANA, into SAP HANA. But in order to understand the attack scenarios that Nahuel is going to show you, we need to learn a little bit of, of the architecture, of how it works. SAP HANA is an integrated web application server plus database. So as you can see here, you see the database portion, the access, the application server portion, and you have other components as well. And you can see also the connections to the rest of the applications or, or SAP products. And that's very uh, common in SAP applications. You, won't, you will never see an isolated SAP application running in an organization. You will always see the SAP system interconnected, running together with tens or hundreds of other SAP applications, interfacing, sending information back and forth, sometimes using, or most of the times I would say, using proprietary protocols uh, to exchange information, and this is no different. So you have some, some examples of the, the type of uh, communication that you have, like SQL or MD export. We will discuss about that later as well. That's uh, the database port. HTTP to connect to web applications. SAP host agent and management console also deployed with every SAP product as well. Outgoing connection, internal communications or T-Rexnet also um, we should refer to it as internal communications uh, despite that. Solution manager, well, you name it, right? It's interconnected and that's what we do when we do research, right? We analyze how it works, uh, what, which are the entry points, the interconnections, how each component works, and eventually we have uh, identified and reported multiple vulnerabilities to SAP. But if we want to take a closer look at this, it's not just a block. It's composed out of multiple processes. Um, so index server, access engine, name server, statistic server, and many others, right? These are just uh, some examples. So that's part of what we do when we do research, analyze each one of the components, understand how they work, and that's the way, the reason why I'm including this here is because those components are some of the ones that we have uh, identified vulnerabilities on. And you have the reference to the document SAP documentation uh, for this. How do we identify a HANA system, right? Uh, how do we know we are dealing with a HANA system? For those of you who are uh, new to HANA, well, it follows a pattern as any other uh, SAP product. Most of SAP products actually follow this system number or instance number pattern. So the 90 that is involved there is a, a configuration of the instance that reflects on every single port that is being opened by the, by the SAP HANA, and there are many. Uh, we can discover that through network uh, uh, scanning, like Nmap, uh, that's useful. Um, and we can use the browser. If we see a page like this, um, that's definitely a HANA system. And we can also access um, multiple apps that are public and will give us information about the version of the HANA system, for example. If we go even one step further into the architecture, uh, how it works, how it was developed, you will see that this is uh, somehow complex because 
the, the building blocks are complex as well. HANA was actually built um, because of a, a mixture of different products, SAP products. Uh, one of them was T-Rex um, and, and a database as well and other components. So they used their own products, modified them, enhanced them to, to create this in-memory database. So these components that you see are components that are coming inherited from a previous product that is called T-Rex. Um, the, the entry points that we will be uh, connecting to are the HTTP interface, the SQL interface, uh, JDB, JDBC, ODBC, any uh, database client, and also the internal communication interfaces. These are connections in between all the processes um, of the different hosts. So these are actually different boxes, right? So you, if you are running SAP HANA, especially in a production environment, you don't want to have an isolated uh, box. You want to um, leverage all the disaster recovery, all the high availability features, and in order to do that, you need to implement multiple boxes. So this is an um, uh, oversimplified schema of how it looks internally, uh, HANA, um, especially pointing to the most relevant um, interfaces or ports that we will be dealing with. So now um, the next section is about attacks or the vulnerabilities affecting SAP HANA. Uh, Nawel is going to actually go into details, into the technical details for the vulnerabilities, but in order to understand a little bit of uh, context of the vulnerabilities, we need to know where we are standing at today. So SAP HANA was released in 2011, um, and over time it was evolving and getting a, a lot of new features, enhancements, modifications. Um, also, there were many vulnerabilities reported to SAP HANA as well over time. So now we can see up to August 2016 that we are uh, getting too close to, to 2015. So the trend is kind of uh, quite visual. Uh, eventually we need to wait for the end of the year to see how it evolves. But this is how it looks like in the X, in, in the horizontal we have the years, in vertical we have the, the number of vulnerabilities and by colors we can identify also criticity. So what's our contribution to this? Uh, we have reported over 80 vulnerabilities in SAP HANA. Uh, we have a very close communication with SAP. Um, we work with them, the product security response team. We have a, um, a, actually a dedicated resource that we are continuously speaking with. Um, we are responsible for 67% of the patches. The patches are sub-security nodes. Those are actually fixes to SAP HANA, to the, the, the product itself. And over time, we have developed a lot of documentation, uh, resources like blog posts, white papers, webcasts, whatever. You can go to the web page, Onapsis web page, and, and check for it. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of our contribution, uh, mainly Nawel's contribution. Um, and the following slides are going to focus on, on the attack scenarios. So, hello, thanks for being here. The first attack that we will review, it's a remote retrieval of credentials to access the database. The affected component, it's a SAP HANA web dispatcher that is in charge of handling all the HTTP and HTTP requests that are made to a database. This component can be configured to log all the different uh, HTTP requests and the trace or the detail level of those uh, login can be configured. The first problem that we found was that the critical or sensitive information that could uh, come in HTTP request was logged in plain text if the trace level was higher enough. And the second problem was that those files can be downloaded without any previous authentication. An attacker pointing his browser to one of those URLs could access and download any of the trace files uh, without any kind of authentication. We will see a 
a demo about this attack. So the first thing is check uh, that the affected system is an SAP HANA. As we see the banner, we know that's uh, a HANA. And now suppose an administrator user is logging to perform his daily tasks. He logs in with his user, does his job, and logs out. Now suppose an, an attacker uh, in a different machine, in a different network, access the previous URLs. He will be able to download the trace file that will contain a lot of sensitive information. He's, uh, he's not logging, and he's doing this without any kind of authentication. For the size of the file, we can know that it's a trace file with a high level of detail in it. And once the file is downloaded, he simply has to access the file and perform a simple search. He can search for usernames, passwords, or any other sensitive information. In this case, he's looking for common, for example, he could just use a simple username or a common username, in this case, administrator, and he will have the password, the username, and the password. In this case, with that information, he can access the database as an administrator user. So what happened here, right? So it's, I think this is a great example of a vulnerability, actually a combination of vulnerabilities that individually each one is not so critical. Each one of them are like maybe uh, sh uh, allowing someone with local access to see passwords, which is critical but not remotely exploitable. The other one allows to retrieve uh, traces remotely without authentication, but okay, traces, come on, it's just technical information. So those two things combined, uh, we actually reported all, all, uh, all two together to SAP because those are part of the same attack vector, right? So on one hand, the SAP HANA system is dumping the credentials when a user is authenticating to a system. And on the other hand, the, the trace file is accessible remotely without authentication. So that's basically a remote password retrieval. So the, the attacker doesn't need to do anything other than continuously uh, retrieving the traces and look for user passwords. When he finds a user password that is good enough for the privileges that he wants to achieve, that's it. He just connects to the, to the SAP HANA system. Um, so this is a, a great example of a combination leading into a full, potentially a full system compromise. So as solution, you should implement the SAP security node that is there, uh, and additional nodes that could help to mitigate the, the issue you can access and, and read it. The second attack is a buffer, remote buffer overflow in the main process of the data, uh, database engine. During our research, we found two highly critical vulnerabilities, to, uh, two remote buffer overflows. The first one uh, <coughs> can be triggered through the HTTP interface, and the second one that we will discuss uh, discussing today can be triggered through the SQL interfaces. Both bugs uh, allow uh, remote and authenticated attackers to fully compromise the platform because the, those bugs give access uh, to the operating system to attack. One thing that they share in common is that coding a reliable exploit could be really difficult. We will see some details about the, the reason of this. And if the attacker doesn't have a reliable exploit, at least what he can perform a, a remote denial of service with any kind of authentication. Uh, a good example of a sabotage attack. We'll see a, a demo of, the, of this bug. In this case, the only thing that the attacker has to do is to execute a simple script. We will see the details of the bug. Just to have a clear view of what's happening, 
uh, what I did was to have a shell with uh, monitoring process uh, with the top command mon and monitoring the process that we will crash. So in this way, we can know that the process crashed, but it's not necessary for the exploit to properly work. So it's just simple as executing a, a script. And as we can see, the process crashed. And that means that every connection that was in that moment was lost. So uh, this attack scenario is focused on two vulnerabilities, two buffer overflows uh, that are pre-authentication. So the attacker doesn't need anything other than being able to reach through the network to the specific port, either the database port, the SQL port, or the HTTP port. Uh, both were uh, vulnerable to these uh, buffer overflows attacks, and nothing more than uh, uh, without access credentials, nothing more than network connection, the attacker eventually could get full uh, system compromise, right? Because it's difficult to exploit, but still possible. So it's a buffer overflow. Potentially, he could reach full system compromise. What's really um, Im the immediate reaction to this vulnerability is uh, denial of service, like a sabotage. So if an attacker wants to actually shut down the HANA system, single packet, he can do it, uh, stop the HANA system and any, any process that is running there. Uh, solution again, uh, we have to implement those security <coughs> nodes, and also it's possible restrict access to the HTTP and SQL interface only to trusted users. Now we will see some details of the bug. It's a pre-authenticated heap overflow. We discovered it when we when we well was sorry we were uh, researching for another vulnerability with a modified. A connector and modify PHDB connector. The PHDB connector is a open source connector developed by SAP to allow Python applications to interact with SAP HANA databases. We started to see random crashes and we didn't understand what happened until we started to look deeper at, at this bug. Uh, as the bug is really complex to, to spot and to analyze, we use different techniques. Uh, we, for example, uh, each time that the process crashed, uh, it uh, wrote a, a trace file, uh, sorry, a crash dump file with information of the, the state of the process uh, just before the crash. We also increased the trace level to a maximum to have all the information possible. And luckily for us, the process was compiled with the bug symbols that helped in the analysis process. The problem we found out was uh, in a property of the protocol, the SQL protocol used by SAP HANA, the property is uh, named uh, client ID, which every client that tries to connect to SAP HANA through the SQL interface has one. A long client ID will end up overwriting different objects that are in the heap. That, that happens when uh, the, the connection object object, sorry, it's uh, processed by the evaluate connect request function. A good thing for the attacker is that it, it will have a lot of space to write the payload in the heap, but he will he has to deal with uh, another problems that we will see now. By default, uh, SAP HANA uh, runs in SUSE Linux 10 that uh, it has memory randomization enabled at system level. The process has another other uh, protection mechanisms in place, but for this type of bug, that doesn't matter. And finally, we think that for this attack to be uh, exploitable in a reliable way, the attacker needs at least an, another bug and information disclosure, uh, information leak, sorry, uh, vulnerability that allow him to know the state of the heap just before executing the exploit. In this way, he would be able to know which objects, objects sorry, uh, are in the heap and in what position, and in this way, he probably could craft a, a reliable exploit. Another technique that he could use is a heap messaging to put things or 
order the heap in a reliable way to, to ease the exploitation. The following attack is a simple password brute forcing of the most important users of the user of the database. The system user is the administrator users, a user of SAP HANA. It's similar to SA in MySQL server. It's unlocked and uh, enabled by default. That, and the most important thing is that the locking uh, part of the password policy doesn't apply for it. That means that an attacker could write a simple script using the, for example, the PHDB connector and perform a brute force attack trying uh, any amount of number of passwords over this user until he, he obtains the credentials. To fix that, SAP release a patch which implements a new uh, para, uh, profile parameter that's a, a parameter to configure the, the, the behavior of the system which enables administrator to enable the locking policy for the system user. Now we will see uh, another demo, in this case, exploiting this attack. In this case, the, the script is really simple. Only tries to connect with a, a world list and, and a, 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 to a system. And after a, a few tries, probably the, the attacker will obtain the password for the system user. He can do that, can do this, uh, knowing that the user won't be locked because the locking policy doesn't apply for system by default. Again, uh, if you think about uh, the brute force attack, it sounds very simple, and actually it is simple, right? Brute force, that's a base for, for every pen tester or researcher. Um, the problem is that a brute force attack is possible in HANA, but not, not for any user. For the most important user, which is a system user, the high privileged user that is uh, authorized to do anything on the system. So that's what we identified on HANA, Basically, that the, the user system was not uh, locked. You, you could brute force him forever. If the password is uh, properly set, if it's random enough or, or uh, complex enough, then probably the attacker will never get it, right? But still, it is possible to do password guessing on, on the system account. And, and just, just because of the impact is so high, this is something that uh, we need to implement, right? Because uh, otherwise, someone could try to log on a system user, and eventually, if he gets a password, that's full system compromise. So as a solution, again, it's implement the patches and properly configure the parameter that sets the locking policy for the system user. And also, it's important to have an auditing policy for all actions that are performed with the system user and obviously review the results. The last attack, and probably the most critical one, it's an uh, abuse of uh, the lacking of authentication mechanisms to execute high privilege functionality over the internal, in internal communications interfaces. So as uh, Shapey explained in the introduction, Internal communication interfaces are used for different things depending on the scenario. In single host deployments, that means host uh, deployments with only one host. Internal communication interfaces are used mainly to communicate the different processes of the database. The protocol, it's custom and it's undocumented, was developed by SAP, and we think that was passed down from an R product called SAP T-Rex. In deploys with more than one host, the, those interfaces are used to communicate each process in each host, but also to communicate different hosts that comprise the SAP HANA system. In this case, the use of the protocol is mandatory. You can't have high availability and disaster recovery and synchronization without having this protocol in your network. It's an authenticated protocol. We think that the reason behind that is uh, that wasn't uh, designed to be used by end users. Depending on the version of the SAP HANA that you are running, uh, interfaces uh, 
having this protocol could be bound to all the networks or in the, uh, that was prior to SPS6. Now, by default, it's properly configured, listening on log and local host only. And starting to in ESPS10, uh, encryption, is, encryption and authentication is enabled by default in each of the different scenarios that you could have. There are different ways to, to configure uh, internal communications interfaces. The most secure and uh, harder to implement is having an uh, isolated network to this kind of communications. This way you have one network for the end users and one network for internal communications. The other one, easier to deploy and probably most common, is having the same network for both types of communication. In that case, you should implement encryption in, for those interfaces. And after uh, our research over the, this, this protocol, we found more than 15 critical vulnerabilities from arbitrary file read and write to denial of service, executing of OS commands, and more, and Python code execution, of course. So in this case, we will see a, a demo of an attacker using different uh, the OS command execution vulnerability to have a, uh, to gain completely access to a platform. The first thing that the attacker will do is perform an MMAP scan to know if the required ports are open. In this case, he finds that the ports that he needs are open. And now what he will do is launch uh, an exploit which executes uh, an OS command. In this case, he will download a Python script, which is a, a shell, a bind shell. He knows that Python wor will work because SAP HANA installs Python by default. Now he executes the, the shell. This is happening in the uh, affected SAP HANA system. And now with, for example, Netcat, he can connect to a port that's open. And he will have a shell with CIDM privileges that are the most uh, powerful privileges for, uh, for the user that is running SAP HANA. Wrapping up of, on this attack, let me go back um, to this, uh, this one. So you, you are running HANA. Uh, you're running HANA in a production, for example, you need to have high availability, so you have multiple boxes. The problem here is that all these boxes need to communicate in between, internally and in between the boxes. And the protocol that Nahuel was mentioning is a protocol that is unauthenticated, interconnecting all these, these uh, processes. Not only unauthenticated, because it doesn't require any username or secret or, or any authentication, but also it provides high privileged functionality, such as uh, accessing files, executing OS commands, and that's a huge problem. Uh, so that's, that was one of the main problems that um, we were analyzing. How is this actually solved, right? Without redoing everything or without uh, like, uh, changing multiple things and having backward com compatibility. So SAP solution was actually a, a good one which is provide a layer of encryption on top of these communications, right? SSL or TLS in between all the endpoints authenticating the certificates. So if you don't have the, a certificate signed by that CA that is created on, on the HANA system, then you can directly not connect to that port. So it's adding a, an, an extra layer of security, uh, encrypting the, the communications in between. Therefore, uh, if you have this uh, patch implemented, actually it's a configuration implemented, an attacker shouldn't be able, even though you have the ports exposed, shouldn't be able to actually execute OS commands or access this uh, critical functionality. Um, so yes, uh, in order to wrap up the attack, no authentication needed, only uh, direct connection again to any of these ports 
this uh, internal communications port. Um, then the, the impact is full system compromise, as you saw. It was maybe a, a, a little bit of a technical attack. Nahuel actually executed something on the HANA system that, it, that downloaded a shell and he connected through Netcat. Right? So eventually what he wanted to get is a, an interactive console or an interactive shell and he got it. Right? He opened a specific port, connected to the HANA system and, and then see the IDM privileges that full system compromise. Um, so Nahuel is going to tell you how to mitigate this, this attack. So, as a solution, you should implement a secure configuration. That means that, if possible, internal communications should happen only in an isolated network. And if that's not possible, you should Im implement encryption. And the next big question that we are asking ourselves is, how do we protect against these kind of attacks, right? Because we have not been going over something that is not a vulnerability and is already patched. So we have identified multiple vulnerabilities. We have worked with SAP in order to close them. Some of them are combinations. Some others are actually configuration steps that you need to implement, right? Um, but how do we do in order to actually secure our SAP HANA system. There are multiple steps that we need to uh, consider. Actually, I would say the most relevant uh, go-to resource is the SAP HANA uh, security guide. That guide is being updated continuously with the latest um, features, uh, security features with the latest uh, configurations required, for example, the, the encryption of, um, of the internal communications. So if you need to make sure that you are considering every angle, you definitely need to go to the HANA security guide because that considers patching process, configurations, every single thing that you need to consider. Despite that, we have grouped some recommendations that are uh, extracted from the HANA security guide, for example, develop secure applications. Um, on each one of these categories, you have uh, other recommendations as well, but the most important recommendation that I want you to take out of this is take a look at the HANA security guide because there are multiple things there that are go unnoticed to uh, some administrators, right? So these things like configuration, secure configuration of the internal communications, um, uh, encrypting HANA communications, minimum privileges. HANA uh, included a completely different paradigm in terms of authorizations. If you are uh, uh, used to setting authorizations in the NetWeaver world, well, this is a completely different paradigm and completely new to many SAP administrators. Therefore, uh, we need to make sure that we are applying the least privileged uh, concept to every single user. Um, so implement single sign-on, secure CDDM, so all these are uh, recommendations that are um, valid for this uh, effort of securing HANA. Use encryption, uh, encryption at the operating system level, uh, at rest and in transit, we should uh, consider both. And uh, finally, enable logs and traces. Um, as you saw, there are multiple uh, logs in SAP HANA. Um, the audit trace, uh, we have uh, multiple traces, like the internal communications uh, traces as well is one of them. And in order to know if something is going on in our system, if there's someone executing unauthorized activities, we definitely need to, on one hand, get the logs, and on the other hand, review them periodically. So that's uh, another very important part of our uh, security strategy. But the most important thing is take care of this, right? We are um, talking about the applications that are running our most sensitive and most critical business processes. Um, I was thinking about putting patch SAP here, but in the end, it's not only about patching. Uh, for sure, uh, the, the, the most important outcome of this presentation is you need to patch, right? Because there are multiple vulnerabilities that you need to close and you need to make sure that those risks are not present in your uh, HANA systems. But it's not only that, it's 
make sure you have the right processes and the right people, um, people that is reviewing the, the patches provided by SAP, implementing them, uh, making sure that the configuration in SAP HANA is properly um, done and in a secure way, make sure you bind together SAP basis team, the SAP security team, the IT security teams. That's, that's something we have been struggling, or actually our customers have been struggling over time to actually uh, be able to communicate because all of them speak different languages, but still all of them have different responsibility on securing SAP systems. Um, so make sure you have a proper SAP cybersecurity strategy in, involving patching, secure configuration, monitoring of the systems, and many other things. Um, so I think this is uh, the most important uh, take out um, from you of this presentation. Uh, as a side note, I also included this um, resource which we released early this year. Uh, we have been working with the Ponymon Institute. They do a lot of research on different areas of IT security. Um, we engaged with them in order to understand what the IT security community thinks out of SAP threats. Um, and there are quite, quite some shocking numbers there. Um, I, I included just a few here. Uh, the ones I believe are the most relevant ones, but still, this is a big report that I encourage you to take a look at. Um, this is the first uh, report speaking about um, threats in SAP and considering uh, the IT security community. Uh, for example, the, the average cost to take SAP offline, um, th that kind of things, those are really eye-opener for us, not only for us, but also for, for the IT security community and the SAP security community. So I really encourage you to um, download this report and, and take a look at the, the facts uh, there. So, yeah, I've, I've been pointing you to multiple resources on our web page. So this is uh, something that I really would like you to do. If you are working specifically on SAP and you happen to be uh, in TechEd, which is next week in Vegas, um, we are having four presentations there. Uh, covering SAP cybersecurity, enhancement of SAP HANA, um, at cyber attacks to SAP, like multiple <coughs> topics. So check on SEC 110, 106, and 38962. Um, so yeah, from us, that's it. Um, thank you for attending this presentation. If you have questions, we have time. Yeah, we have some time. <laughs>